body of Christ. Uh, so often we all come to church and we, uh, we accept Christ as our Savior, we get saved, and then we wonder, what's next? What do I do now? I'm going to uh, go over, the, the pastor has brought us up to, uh, to a certain point of explanation of this. Uh, I'm just going to touch briefly on a few things to give you that foundation, and then I'm going to talk about one particular gift, just one particular gift that I think uh, so many people in this church possess, and I want to show you how gifts can be so simple but so useful, so simple but so useful. I'm going to start off in a word of prayer. Everybody bow with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for a beautiful day, Father. Your handiwork is so evident outside, and I, I thank you for it. Thank you for allowing us to gather together in your house to worship you, to give praise and honor and glory to you. Father, we're, we're so thankful that you created each and every one of us from the dust of the earth to experience this life. Thank you, Father, for providing a, a plan of salvation that even though we are in trespasses and sins, that we can become saved. We can have atonement for our sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. I am so grateful, Father, that even someone like I can obtain salvation. Father, I pray if there's anyone here today, either in this service or the service to follow that doesn't know Christ, Father, I pray that they will realize their lost condition. I pray, Father, that they will not be able to leave this place without accepting Christ. Father, please make it evident to them such, a, such an important decision needs to be made that will affect their eternity. Father, I pray that you'll give me the words to say, the thoughts to think as I grow up with this lesson. Thank you for the opportunity to do this. I pray that you will just be with us in everything, and I, I can't say enough. I want to give you all the honor, the praise, and glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Okay, we're talking about spiritual gifts. A spiritual gift is something that a believer receives whenever they accept Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Someone that has not accepted Christ will not have a spiritual gift. The way that it happens, or uh, it happened for me, it happens for so many people, you're sitting in a church service, you, you get under conviction, uh, the Holy Spirit touches your heart, you go forward, you accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. At that very moment, you become regenerated. You become born again. You've heard us say this again and again. You're born again. At that moment that you're born again, the Holy Spirit comes to live in your life. You are sealed. And you are bestowed upon spiritual gifts. Some people receive one. Some people, some people receive many. Uh, these gifts are bestowed upon us as Christians so that we can edify the church of Jesus Christ, that we can help the church to go forth and, and, and do what Christ intended us to do, and that's to preach the gospel unto all nations and to see as many people saved as, possibly, as possible. We're to try to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ so people can, can become saved and not have to face you know, an eternal separation from God. Uh, we have the definition of a spiritual gift uh, that the pastor gave us. It, uh, it's an instantaneous, uh, it's, a, a, it's a thing that's given by God and the power of the Holy Spirit to do or say something beyond one's natural ability in order to fulfill a purpose of God in the time frame which God permits. Now that's the long definition that the, that the Fred has given us. But the Holy, the Holy Spirit empowers us to do something that's helpful to the church so the church can continue to work. Uh, and if you're like me, when you think of spiritual gifts, the first thing you automatically think of is the office of pastor or missionary <laughs> or a teacher. But, you know, those gifts are, are just so uh, so seen. I 
mean, there, there's so many gifts that are behind the scene that people don't realize that they exist. And since I've been teaching here, in the short time that I've been teaching, I've had so many people tell me that they wish they could find their place in the church. That they, they, don't, real, they don't know where they fit in to the body of Christ. Uh, and you can learn it. You can find out what your gift is just by studying these scriptures and just by going through this class. And at the end of this class, we're going to take a test that will help you find out what your gift is. Now, as I've studied the gifts, I have, uh, you know, in my own mind, been able to pick out some gifts that I know some certain people here have. I mean, it's just obvious to me. Uh, it's up to you to determine what gifts you do have. But, uh, you know, without a doubt, our pastor has the gift of exhortation, uh, the gift of pastoring, uh, the gift of encouragement. Uh, he preaches the gospel. Uh, you know, his, his gift is seen because he's in front of us every Sunday. But what about these other gifts? And, you know, I, I think about my wife, Laura, and, you know, she has kind of indicated to me that she doesn't really know where she fits in to the scheme of things at some times. And so I want to talk about uh, one particular gift that is out there, and... Uh, it's the gift of helps. And helps is, is very important. And it's one of the, one of the uh, 19 spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit will bestow upon a person when they, accept, when they accept Christ. The gift of helps is no more important than the position of pastor. No more important than being a missionary. We're all equal. It's just, it all works together for the good. There's a story of a man that was standing on the corner of a busy street handing out tracts. He was handing them out as people walked by. There was a fellow Christian not far away that was watching him. And the fellow Christian became agitated because the guy was just handing out tracts left and right. He didn't bother to stop anybody to tell them about the gospel. So he walks up to the guy puts his hand on his shoulder and says, Brother, listen, you got to do more than just hand out tracts. Now, you've got to stop these people. You've got to talk to them. Well, the poor guy turned around and he opened his mouth and not a word came out. He was mute. He didn't have the ability to speak. But see, he was doing what he could. He was doing what he could. He was handing out tracts. He wasn't able to stop someone and tell them about Jesus. So he was doing what he could. Now, is that helpful to the cause of Christ? Absolutely. Absolutely. Just by doing that, someone, you know, through the, through the help of the Holy Spirit will read that track, fall under conviction, and accept Christ. So the smallest thing that you do can be magnificent. You know, I've, I've heard Charles Stanley say more than once, always follow God and leave the consequences up to if you always do what God tells you to do, put everything else to the side, follow Him, leave the consequences up to Him, you'll always come out ahead. You'll always come out a winner with, with Christ. And He will never forsake you, never leave you. 1 Peter 4.11 says, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as or his ability which God giveth. So each of us need, has, has an obligation to find out what our gift is and use it. Now the word minister, when you hear that word minister, you automatically think of a pastor. But in the original language, in the Koine Greek, what it means is to serve. It's not pertaining to the office of pastor. We are all ministers of Christ Jesus. We're all here to serve. We're here to serve Christ. We're here to serve one another. We are all ministers here. So I want to talk about the office or the spiritual gift of helps. And I see that so prevalent here at Big Bottom that helps is everywhere here. And you may be 
fulfilling your spiritual gift and not even realizing it. Now we're going to talk about these other gifts, the exhortation. In fact, uh, let's go to our Bibles and uh, look at uh, 1 Corinthians 12. I want to keep our minds fresh. I want to keep our minds fresh on what all we're talking about. 12.28, 1 Corinthians 12.28. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. These are some of the spiritual gifts, the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, those that can perform miracles, the gift of healing, and then helps. And I just want to talk about helps today, but we're going to talk about each and every one of these in more detail as Fred and I take us along. But what is helps? What exactly is helps? Helps is support. Helps is, is you take one's turn with. Turn to uh, Acts 6, chapter 6, verse 2. I'm going to give you the biblical Acts 6. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring, a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, that's the Greeks against the, uh, the Jewish people, because their widows were neglected in the daily administration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, Look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and uh, Prochorus, and uh, Nicanor, Timon and uh, Parmenas and Nicholas and uh, the uh, proselyte of Antioch. So let me tell you what was going on here. The Greeks were becoming aggravated because the Jewish people, in their opinion, the Jewish people were taking care of the, with their widows. Uh, they were giving preference over their widows uh, versus ones that were Grecian. And of course the, the apostles themselves were concerned about this. But they were busy spreading the gospel of Christ. And they got together and they said should we stop what we're doing and jump in there and you know make sure that these widows are taken care of, that, that they're being fed, that their needs are being met. And no. You know, the Lord led them to go and select some men that can help that that can help do that particular task. All right. So they elected seven capable men to handle the welfare distribution among these widows. The gift was not waiting. The gift was not waiting on tables. That may appear what it would be, but what it involved was the. Uh, freeing up of the apostles that they could concentrate upon spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's what happens so often, you know, here at Big Bottom. You know, we have a lot of dinners here. We have, uh, you know, a lot of programs going on. And our pastors, you know, Philip and Fred, Corey and Danny, they've been commissioned by God to preach the gospel. Now, certainly they can get in there and jump in and take care of some of these other things. But it's the will of God that there be people like you and I that can jump in and serve tables or work with, uh, work with the Iwanas or videotape messages so those that can't attend can hear 
or do the sound system or uh, play the organ, uh, play the piano, uh, help out with the youth, uh, sing in the choir, uh, uplift the preachers when they're preaching. God. Brother Harlan, you know, inspires inspires those that are up there in the pulpit. These are all things that edify the gospel of Jesus Christ, and they're not in insignificant in any way. They are just as important as the person up there preaching. Diane, when you play the organ, you are fulfilling the obligation that Christ has given you. He has given you the gift of music. And you're using it. You're using your spiritual gift. And it's no more important than what Fred is up there doing. You're providing your part. He's doing his part. And together, we're all working together to edify, to, to build up the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. The same thing with Sister Nancy. who works with the youth. And she does these plays. And uh, she organizes all these different things going on. These, She's a helper. And there are so many helpers here in this church, and it's a blessing to see them because of the importance that that has within the church of Jesus Christ. The gift of helps is the spirit given ability to serve the church in any supporting role, usually temporal, though sometimes spiritual. The gift enables one to serve joyfully and diligently wherever and whenever required. So, I want you to realize how important, ladies and gentlemen, that your role is in doing the part that you do. There's helps. There's also another gift called hospitality. Now, hospitality is, for instance, uh, uh, say that a visiting uh, minister, evangelist comes in and you're willing to open your home to them, to allow them to stay. Or say a, a sister church of ours has a family who, uh, who has a young child that uh, is having to be treated at CAMC. They live afar off. You open up their home to them so that uh, they can be close, have a place to stay, and still be with their child, hospitality. These are two simple gifts. They sound simple, but they are very important. And I wanna, I wanna praise and thank everyone here that's a helper. You are a helper. Next week, we will get into more of the gifts. Uh, I'm sorry for the, for the short uh, lesson today, but go back and look at Acts chapter 6 and read how the disciples discerned that they need to get some helpers to help them so that they could go back and concentrate upon prayer and upon preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ so that men could be saved. Men and women could accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the many spiritual gifts that you have bestowed upon us. Father, within our church here, I can see so many of your gifts being demonstrated. Thank you, Father, for giving us pastors. Thank you for Fred. Thank you for, for Philip. Thank you for Corey. Thank you for Danny. Thank you for uh, the deacons that we have in our government. Thank you for our helpers. Thank you for the, those that are in hospitality. And Father, all the others that feel different spiritual gifts that you have so graciously bestowed upon them whenever someone, ex whenever someone accepts Christ. Father, I pray if there's anyone here today that doesn't know what I'm talking about as far as a spiritual gift because they've never known Jesus Christ. I pray that today would be the day of salvation. Please prick their hearts and open them to the idea that they need to be saved. Yeah. Yeah. Father, put him on their heart that they ask themselves, what will they do with this man okay. called Jesus? What a wonderful Savior we have, Father. I, sometimes I don't have the words to express all the gratitude I have for you saving me. Thank you, Father, for all that you've done. Please dismiss us to the main service. I pray that you will be all over our pastor this morning. 
fill him with every inch of the Holy Spirit that he can hold. Let the word go forth with power. Father, I pray that hearts will be touched, lives will be changed, and most of all that you will be glorified because you are worthy. Thank you for everything, Father. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all.